games, 47 straight games, he has reached base. And we are ready to go. Josh Hartle with the first pitch of the game. And that's a call ball one behind the plate today. David Pritchett, who was at third base last night, again, as Wake Forest won at 5 to 4. And the 1 0 pitch, that is a chopper right to second base. Tell you're all over that one. And there's one away. Pretty good difference between the second pitch last night and the second pitch tonight. Here you see the percentage of pitches and the way that Josh Harder will use him. He's got a terrific cut fastball, really a fairly new pitch for him. Fastball with a little bit of movement. The slider is good when it's down. His bread and butter is his curveball. First pitch to Smith, a high chopper to King for the easy out. A couple of ground balls induced by Hartle, and they're two away. Oh, wait. Florida State looking very aggressive, swinging early in the count. And if Hartle can keep moving the ball around the strike zone, that works to his advantage. Now Tibbs will stand in and hit the ACC RBI leader starting this weekend. He looks at strike one. And another one of those left-handers that's just got the beautiful swing from the left-hand side. Really productive player. You see the RBIs, the home runs. Plays a very solid right field back there today for FSU. He's the guy you look at the lineup and say, don't let this guy beat us. Let's force somebody else to. He's only a couple of home runs from the top 10 all time at Florida State. 13th going into the weekend. That RBI total of 58, third in the country. Here's the Hartle 2-1. Count a square now, 2-2. Two and two. You say that's a hitter-friendly ballpark in Tallahassee? It is there. It is here, <laughs> it is right? Both of them, exactly. And, and the wind is much more of a factor, or should be today. Charlie, any win last night, and you saw the in the open, the, the home run from Max Williams, and we anticipated more, as you <laughs> always do here, but there, there weren't any more. That was it. Payoff pitch to Tibbs. That is foul. Look out down there. Time McGahey in the third base box for FSU. Brad Vanderglass over at first base. Anybody keep count of uh, payoff pitches last night? How many 3-2 pitches were there? This is a slow roller into the shift. And a good play by Teller in the bottom of the first. And that's a base hit to right. First pitch might be two. Let's see. Yep. Houston's going to turn the corner and head to second base. And I'm not sure that Wake Forest could have started any better on the mound, in the field, and at the plate <laughs> here today. A little bit different than yesterday for sure. That's the 12th double of the year for Merrick Houston, which ties him for the team lead, goes inside out, and smokes it down the right field side. Easy stand-up double. Houston was 0 for 4 last night. The top five hitters in the wake order last night struck out 12 times. So Houston gets uh, the top of the order off to the positive start. Here's Tellier, who again drove in the three runs last night, three of the five. He takes ball one. Boy, and look at the defense for Florida State already anticipating a bunt. Cam Smith way in at third. Cantu way in at first base. Kind of an odd, oh, now Cantu drops back a little bit, but an odd defensive alignment. And kind of a half swing there, a ball and a strike. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what that shows anybody with that swing, but now <laughs> both corners move back. <laughs> we'll talk some later about the weight gray jerseys with the lavender number. Uh, oh, combined numbers and numerals. <laughs> but they're... I think they're kind of sharp. We'll talk yep. a little bit later about them. They're for a good cause. There's a good look at them. Two and one to the Deacon second baseman on a bright, sunshiny day right now. He shows bunt, pushes it toward first. It's foul. They were playing two today because the weather forecast for tomorrow was not cooperating. This first game was always scheduled for four. Wake Forest football had its spring game today at 2 o'clock. A lot going on around these parts. 
So we'll play the first and uh, kick back for t- uh, 40 minutes and then play the second one today. And this stadium is packed. A sellout today. And the 2-2. That's a little uh, floater left side and easy play for Smith. And Tellier is retired. And he's not very happy. All right, here this is the percentages on what Dorsey will feature. And you see heavy on the fastball side. Goes with the slider the second most amount of times. The changeup has got some arm side run to it. Throws the cutter a little bit and then a curveball. So very similar type stuff, different ways that he uses it than what Josh Hartle does. Now first baseman Nick Kurtz. First pitch swung on deep uh, on the right side out there in the grass. Fisher, who starts at second today for FSU with the out. And down to third base will go Houston. So Kurtz retired. And now two down for Seaver King, who moves up a couple of spots from uh, last night. He hits six now in the cleanup roll. Third baseman again today. His numbers on the year, including 11 home runs. Outfield shifted around toward right, straight away in center, but towards left center for Ferrar in, in uh, left field. And Seaver really is a corner to corner kind of guy. Got good power to right, but also gets a fair share of home runs to left. 1-0 pitches inside, two balls and no strikes. He had an interesting comment before the game yesterday. He said that his exit velocities are about the same from both sides, but he gets more loft and exit angle uh, to the right side. So he gets more balls in the air to the right. 2 pitch, that floats in for a strike. To one of the best high jumpers in the state of Georgia as a high schooler, Seaver King. He's a good athlete. Out of Athens, Georgia, started his baseball career at Wingate. Big cut there, and it's two and two. You ever high jump? In fact, yes. I did a little bit. Did six feet in high school. Not much. <laughs> but it ran concurrent to the baseball season. So. I hear you. Two, two, yeah, he knew it right away. Seaver King strikes out looking. And the Deacons stretch. The state's already played as they go on the road a little bit too. So it's when you play the team. But in the ACC, anybody gets hot for a weekend and they can sweep you or lose three. It can go either way. Marco Dinges, the DH again for Florida State today. And like Wake Forest, Florida State has moved last night's number six hitter, which Dinges was, up to the cleanoff clean up spot his numbers on the year including nine home runs chopper up the middle played perfectly by Tellier easy play and that's four straight ground balls to start for Josh Hartle and three of them to second base yeah all of them very routine not a hard play really among the bunch And in, you, in a day when you've got a doubleheader, low pitch counts, fast outs. Ferrer, another ground ball, another one to second base. Another out, close play at the bag. A little bit closer than it seemed like it was going to be. Uh, tell you, double clutched a couple of times, and the ball took some time getting to him. But another soft contact, low pitch count, ground ball. Now Cantu, the first baseman, a couple base hits last night. That's in for a strike outside corner. Hartle ready and the 0-1. Another ground ball, this one up the middle for a base hit. Six ground balls to start, one finds its way and Two out single for the Florida State first baseman. And now, as always, the key, what do you do with the next guy? I mean, it's it's another little sharper hit ball, but not crushed by any means. But how do you react to this guy is the question. 
Here's the catcher, Holbrook. He did not play last night. Jackson West was behind the plate catching for the Knowles. Show me the money, Stan. Is this a good baseball name or what? <laughs> As a first name, yeah. <laughs> Their balls, two strikes, one on, and two away here in the top of the second. That's another ground ball. The throw will go to second for the out. Good play and throw by Seaver King. And the Knowles retired here in the second. On to the bottom of the inning in Winston. This ball sends. Jack Winnet will lead it off. The Deacon right fielder takes a cut at the first pitch. Winnet over three last night, a couple of strikeouts. That's high. One and one. You look at the Wake Forest team from last year, and they lost seven of their nine starters, and you wonder, how are they going to come back? Really, only Merrick Houston and Nick Kurtz coming back as starters. Ten players drafted from that team, but Tom Walter went to the transfer portal. Got some freshmen that are contributing, especially in the pitching staff. That's high three balls and a strike. When they only started a couple of games last year, he's uh, pretty much solidly the right fielder for the Deeks. 3-1 pitch, high and deep to left. Ferrer out there at the wall, and that ballpark will not hold it. And Wake Forest has an early lead. Slightly different type of home run for Wene. A lot of his have massive speed to them getting out of the ballpark. That really had some hang time. And so did the chest bump with Chase Walter as he heads back to the dugout. Wake for us quickly on top. Another look at it. He's, as you said, Larry, way up in the sky. It looked like it was going to make it by a lot more than it did. It hit the lottery sign out in left field, 346 feet. 103 miles per hour off the bat, so. 1A puts Wake on top after the move down into the five hole. His 14th home run. Here's a check swing, and he did go. So when A starts the year out in the eighth spot, Gets hot, has some home runs, gets moved up to six. Now, then projected into the, then put into the four hole for a while. Now moved today down to five and responds. That is out of play. Yesterday, again last night, Florida State got the early lead on a solo home run to lead off the game. Now Wake leads off the second with a solo shot to take the lead. Wake's lead, the first lead that the Dicks got last night, only came in the bottom of the eighth. Yeah, fueled by a bases loaded walk. And we'll tell you had three RBIs, right? Yeah, there was that too, yep. But hey, a couple of misplayed bunts entered into it as well. Here's the 2-2, two -two. that's high. We talked to a lot of Florida State people today and they were Nobody in the Seminole camp happy with, with uh, the defensive effort no. last night. Well, a couple of balls that should have had plays made on them, and, and Jamie Arnold sabotaged himself just a little bit, but a fantastic pitcher. Boy, listening to the Wake Forest players talk about Arnold's stuff last night, best pitcher we've seen. Jake Reiner said he's the best pitcher I ever faced. You know, things like that. There were a lot of compliments flowing for that young man. Yeah, Rhino struck out three times yeah. in the game last night. 3-2 pitch, struck him out. Strikeout number two for Dorsey, and there's one away. You don't see a lot of guys with the long-arm delivery that Dorsey have. There are some professional teams that teach the exact opposite. But bottom line is it comes down to how are you the most effective with what you have within yourself. You know, it's hard to force somebody to change themselves just because we think you can be better that way. And he's been effective in his career with that long arm type delivery. And he's in the starting rotation at Florida State. That's a pretty good spot to be. Here's the left fielder Salvino for Wake. Back-to-back -back starts for him. Just his fourth start today. 
He hasn't had that many opportunities, Larry, but he, he really has taken advantage of the chances he's gotten. He's 5 of 13 on the year with a home run and four runs driven in. That's out of play. Yeah, that bunt that he got down between Arnold and Cantu. I asked him if he tried to place it there. He said, I just wanted it down. <laughs> then he heard Matt Wessinger. He said at first base saying, run, run, run. One, two pitch. That's off the plate. Two balls and two strikes to the grad student from Charlotte. Started his career at Washington and Lee. Struck him out. So back-to-back -back strikeouts for Dorsey and third of the day for him. The rumor has a Washington and Lee's a fair academic school also. <laughs> a fair. <laughs> well, Dorsey again, two, two batters in a row, goes upstairs with a fastball and gets a clean swing and miss. Now Cam Nelson back out in center field for Wake Forest today. Nobody on, two outs. That's a high into shallow left for Rare there, right on the line, battling the sun and maybe the wind as well. Makes a great catch. Would speculate that's the way the wind is blowing. Second baseman Cal Fisher leads it off for FSU. Did not play in the game last night. Freshman from Deerfield, Wisconsin. Really good basketball player in high school. The all-time leading scorer for the Deerfield Demons as a hoopster. And obviously very good at baseball as well. <laughs> if he decides to play baseball, yeah. he's pretty good. That's where you want to be. That is just foul by about three feet down the right side. Stays alive on the 0-2 pitch. And Wake again won 5-4 last night. The Deacons 17-6 at home. And now 25-12 on the year there. It's a strikeout. First of the day for Hartle. And there's one away. Well, to this point, it looks like the Josh Hartle of old. A lot more breaking balls, it seems like. We're seeing more curveballs today instead of the cutter that he'd been having a lot of success with. And some pretty feeble haps, hacks to this point on that breaking ball. Now the shortstop, Lodis. That's in for a strike. Yeah, Hartle looks very comfortable out there today. Big 6-5 left-hander, ball and a strike. One one pitch, fool, the ball and two strikes. And when he's landing the curveball, then all of a sudden that cutter that gets into the right-hander is more effective. One two is fouled off toward the right side and Foul back out into the no bullpen. That is going to be a tough play. Charging is king. He cannot make the play. Odise will be safe down at first. Well, if he had caught the ball with the glove, I'm not sure he'd had time to make the transfer and throw. It might have been just a bare hand play. So it was do or die and uh, not much opportunity really for an out on that. You can see how far back King was coming in full speed. Yeah, I don't think there's any way they get low D's. No. There'll be a base hit, and to the top of the order, here's Williams. He squares to bunt, fielded here by Burley. Throw is the first for the out. Good play down to second. We'll go low D's as Max Williams gives up his bat. Well, and as Burley comes to the inside part, you saw the big stretch to the inside part of the field from uh, Nick Kurtz over at first base. Helps to have a six foot, six inch first baseman. Bunt right out in front, good speed getting down there. And look at the big stretch by Kurtz. Now Cam Smith, he takes a strike. A couple really good first basemen in this ball game.
That is high. Some moans from the Wayne fans <laughs> on that call. A ball and a strike. One one is low. Two balls and a strike. Pickens got their home run on a so or their uh, run on a solo homer from Jack One A, and that's where we are here in the third inning. King charges, feels cleanly this time. Throw is high, no tag at the at first base. Kurtz is saying maybe a replay on it. Yeah, I think Kurtz thought that he hit him in the helmet as he ran by the base, and so he wants the replay. He instantly went. Josh Hartle put his hands out and said he thought he was safe. I thought that when he got the tag on, he'd already crossed the base. Now, Tom Walton. Okay. What's the deal here? He's safe. Okay. Yeah, and so Wake Forest loses one of their reviews. That was a tough one. So everybody's safe. Smith down at first. Lodice down to third. So one challenge by the wayside for the Deeks. Swing and a miss by Tibbs, who grounded out to win the first inning. Yeah, this isn't the guy that you want to see up either in this situation. RBI machine. Backs out. Uh-oh. Buck. Yep. Was a big charge down the line by Lodis, and I think he might have gotten Hartle to flinch just a little bit, which is all that it takes. So both runners will advance a base. That's on the ground to Tellier. Easy play for him, but the damage done. Florida State. Excuse me. The, yeah, the Pennsylvania Alliance of Ep Ep Epilepsy and also the Ryan Lloyd Foundation. Now, the Ryan Lloyd Foundation, he was a player at Wake Forest on Tom Walter's first two teams when he came to Wake Forest. Ball and a strike to Burley. Lloyd passed away last year, unfortunately, but they're still doing some fundraising for the foundation and with the family, working in conjunction with the family. Here's the 1-1 pitch. You can bid on those jerseys. Godix.com slash auctions. I think the minimum bid is $200. And they're gorgeous. Oh, I, yeah, the, they're neat looking. Yeah, the, the gray and lavender color combination is really sharp. That was a surprise when they came out in those jerseys. And Burley strikes out number four for Dorsey and one yeah, away here in the bottom of the third inning. So we'll give you some reminders about that all during the day. But another... Great day to raise epilepsy awareness. Top of the wake order, here's Houston, who led off the first with a double, eventually stranded at third. There is a strike. Florida State ties the game. There, there was an error, a balk. You combine that with what we saw yesterday, we've seen <laughs> everything, nearly everything. Here's the 0-1, that's in for a strike. The thing about the balk is, obviously, with Josh Hartle with his back to third base, he couldn't really see the runner going down, but heard people saying that he was going, and he flinched just a little bit. Didn't miss by a whole lot. One ball, two strikes. At 95. Wind blowing hard out to right right now. One two pitch swing and a miss strikeout. Number five now for Dorsey. Houston not too happy with himself for chasing that ball. That bounces around the back foot. It's a good slider. The Wake Forest players were talking about Arnold's breaking ball yesterday, sometimes back door, sometimes back foot. Another breaking ball, Taylor swing and a miss. He popped out in the first inning. 
Ten home runs on the year for the Deacon's second baseman. That is foul down the third base side. And Dorsey quickly ahead in the count here. Nothing and two. That sails high. We're coming to a scrimmage in the fall and the players didn't have names or numbers on their T-shirts. But one guy at third base kept drawing my attention, and it was Adam Tellier. Just you could tell the way he moved that he could do a lot of different things and do them well. Just looks like a ball player. Two balls and two strikes. Dorsey started the day with 37 strikeouts in 29 innings. Already has struck out five Deacons today, and here's the 2-2 full count. That's to tell you lays off the one that everybody else has been chasing. Payoff pitch struck him out looking number six for Dorsey. Tell you retired the Deacons go quietly in the third we go to the fourth four FSU runs last night. Hartle delivers ball one. Another ground ball that is foul. Joseph Blumenauer at third base called the ball and balls and strikes last night. So he gets a day off today. <laughs> Umpires like that third base assignment. Is that the coveted spot? Well, that's that's kind of a. You don't get a lot of plays, generally speaking. It's up and away, two and two. You think about it. Most of your appeals are going to be at first base. They just go around the field. Home plate, obviously, the most important replays that you'll see, but also probably the fewest. Full count. Another one. A series of full counts <laughs> this weekend in Winston Salem. Hit pretty hard, base hit. Left center field. Good start for Florida State here in the top of the fourth inning. Still rather see a base hit on a full count than a walk. If I'm pitching and it's a fastball, it gets hit, it's a base hit, okay but just hated walks. Fourth base runner of the day for FSU. Now Ferrer, the left fielder, grounded out to second base. Switches on to the left side of second for the FSU left fielder. Taylor at second base, almost right behind second. Defensively, here's the 1 0. That is pulled. That is by King at third. That was a sharply hit ball down the line. And the first two Knowles here in the fourth inning have reached base. Yeah, that was a screamer down the line and backhand attempt by King with no chance. This ball's on him before you can blink. And short hops a little bit as well. Then just down at second base. Ferrer at first. Couple of singles to start the fourth inning for FSU. And Hartle's kind of sailing right along. It got odd third inning with the, the, the balk and an error. Seminoles played it a run to tie the game. Now they're in business here as Cantu stands in. He had a base hit back in the second inning. Wants to push him along. Really, really good bunt. One play, Hartle. Well, let's buy the bag at first. Uh, the go-ahead run comes in to score, and it's two to one, Florida State. A double clutch by Hartle as he waited for Tellier to get over into position. I don't know if the ball got into the turf or not. We see another bluff over at second base. Now Hartle gets to the ball in pretty good shape, but he has to wait right there. 
And then the ball got mixed up a little bit with the base runner. Now Corey Muscara is going to <laughs> come out for a conversation. He takes two steps out of the dugout and makes the sweep for everybody in the infield to come in to have this. And here's Holbrook swinging a miss, strike one. A pretty big secondary lead for Cantu over at first base. It's like Florida State has decided to be aggressive on the base paths today. No one pitch. Play is going to be at the plate. Easy tag for the out. And I'm not sure what Ferrer was thinking on that one. Now, ordinarily, the contact play is only on when there's one out. Generally speaking, you've got to make sure that ball is through. But as soon as that ball was hit on the ground towards third, he was off. And he was an easy pick for King, who just takes his time, makes a strong, solid throw. That worked out just about as well as it possibly could for Wake Forest. So the one out, here's Fisher, who struck out to lead off the third inning. Throw to second, back is can two. And that's all it takes, is it just takes a, a pickoff play here or there just to let Florida State know that you're paying attention to them, or the, the team that's being aggressive on the base pass, whatever game you're playing in. Let them know you're thinking about them. Pitch to the plate, that's chopped foul. Ball on a strike. Well, Wake Forest has committed two errors today. See where King getting a workout at third base for Wake Forest. Thought you said nothing happened at third base. <laughs> <laughs> it's all happening at third base today. Umpire wise. Oh, okay. I wasn't listening to you. <laughs> what new? That is outside, two balls and two strikes. Struck him out, two down. Yeah, cutter on the inside part, running in on the hands. Good pitch by Hartle. Yeah, you see where Burley sets up in that ball, just keep running in on for the hands. So Fisher retired, second strikeout for Hartle. Now the number nine hitter, Lodis, who Singleton scored on a balk way back in the third inning. Just feels like it was way back. <laughs> so, so much has happened between then and now. <laughs> Thanks for that clarification. <laughs> That is pretty well hit to left. Now it starts to die. It drops in front of Salvino. Another Florida State run will score. And the Knolls now have a two-run lead. It's 3-1 to one FSU here in the fourth inning. Boy, look at the damage being done out of the number nine spot for Florida State. Lodice off to a big start. Tries to get it in the hands, but he shortens up, takes it inside, and no chance for Salvino. Big RBI for Florida State. Cantu comes home to score. Top of the Seminole order now. Here's Max Williams. He does go around strike one. He has struck out and sacrificed today. See, when you get older, time changes yeah. on you, right? I wouldn't know. <laughs> time space continuum? I, that I don't know. You're, you're way too deep for me now.
O2 pitch in front of the plate. Wake Forest took the early lead on the home run. But Florida State has scratched out three cents and a two run lead for the Seminoles here in the fourth inning. Another throw to second. Back this time is Holbrook. Struck him out with home runs in the last 11 games as he leads off and looks at ball one. Conditions, by the way, are favorable for a Nick Kurtz home run on this particular afternoon. Yeah, when blowing out to right. That is high, two balls and no strikes. He's been struggling a bit with left handers so far this year. It's really been a little bit of a roller coaster season for him. He was one for four last night. Again, 0 for one today. There's a strike. Good pitch from Dorsey. That is tipped at the plate, two and two. I think he'd try to go high fastball here. Struck him out, number seven now for Dorsey, and one away. And I'd have done the same thing. I'd have swung and missed on that, too, because I'd have been thinking high fastball. <laughs> yeah, he took a little off of it. Here's another yeah, look at good, it. Good breaking ball. Takes a little off. Gets it in a good location. Seven strikeouts and four in a row. Here's Seaver King. Big cut. Comes up empty. Looks like he's determined to not strike out. He struck out looking to end the first inning. That's foul. Way ahead of it, nothing in two. In the air to right, it is slicing foul. Not by much. That would have been a home run. Just at the pole. And it's right down that line, only 300 feet. Wind helping. Just barely missed his 12th home run. Well, Seaver King and Matt Wessinger in the first base coaching box had just about as good a look at it as Gregory Sheets, the first base umpire, did. And neither one of them was jumping up and down. So must have gone foul before the pole. Charging Lodis at short. Got him. They're two down. Bang, bang play. Good strong throw from Lodis after the after the charge. Two down. Good quick transfer by Lodis, too. Look how quickly he gets rid of that ball. And still has plenty on the throw. Yeah, King was saying, oh, I beat it. Here's Wene. Hit a solo home run to lead off the second inning. Wake's only run of the day. See the King try to, Greg, you know I did, but <laughs> it didn't work. That is up under his chin. A ball and a strike. A lot to be said for chin music. We looked at Kurtz last year, this year. What about Wene? Well, he only had two starts a year yeah, ago. Just 19 at bats. I've told the story several times before. I asked Bill Salento at the batting cage one time last year who's going to be the next big Wake Forest hitter amongst this freshman class. And he said, well, it could be that guy in the, in the batting cage right now, and that was Wene. And he has broken out in a big way for Wake Forest this season. Here's Coach Bill Salento in the third base box. Handles the hitters along with Matt Wessinger. And 
and a great recruiter. It's inside full count. That is hit hard, but pull foul down the line. That's how he walked it. A couple of hitters now have laid off that high fastball, and that's what has been getting the strikeouts. Early in the ball game here for Dorsey, so both teams making an adjustment to the deliveries of the opposing pitcher. First walk of the game given up by Dorsey. That'll get Jake Reinish to the plate. He was the second strikeout victim of the day to Dorsey back in the uh, second inning. You look at Wene and you wouldn't think he's much of a base running threat, but he's three for three in stolen bases this season. To the plate, he did go around. Twisted the whole body yeah. with it, yeah. It's a strike. And the 0 1 pitch. High inside, ball and strike. Yeah, that's the, that's the weird thing about baseball is you can look at it that way or you look at it as I'm a 305 hitter on the season. I know that I'm a good hitter. I've hit every year in my lifetime, so I know it's there. Ball two, two and one to count. Reinish out of Clifton Park, New York. Father was a Demon Deke back in the yep. late 80s. That is high, three balls in a strike. One pitch. Full count. Elevated and a little bit outside. Had a good swing at it though. Better swing. Big cut comes up empty. Strikeout number eight for Dorsey. We move along. Of the game of baseball, he's still missed. Yeah, passed away in February. Ball two to Cam Smith, who has grounded out and reached on an error today. Got to confess, some of the fandom that I have for baseball came out when he announced his retirement a couple of years back. Elaine and I were living in Florida, and we made a trip up to Tallahassee for a game just to say thanks for everything that he had done for the game of baseball. Because if you're a fan of college baseball, you have to acknowledge his contributions. Well, 48 straight games. You see, tied for 12th, longest streak in Seminole history. He just finds a way. There's a strike to Tibbs, who's 0 for 2 with a couple of ground balls to second base today. Tibbs scored two of the four runs last night for FSU.
He looks like a hitter, doesn't he? Mm. Throw to first back is Cam Smith. He's also three for three. Stolen bases. He's a big man. Two balls and a strike. Some of the Wake Forest fans are getting a little restless. Well, Jacob Burley explaining to the dugout where he thought the pitch was. It's out of play behind us. Two balls and two strikes. James Tibbs out in right field. Again for Florida State. That is foul pulled into the bullpen. Breaking ball stayed a little bit more inside than Hartle and Burley wanted. Two two pitch stays alive. When this game is over, 40 minutes, and we'll play it again. Not the same game again. We'll play the third game. Why not? You've got nothing else to do. Oh, what a way to spend a day. And it, yeah. And this game kind of, sort of, feels like last night's already. Struck. Came out. Looks like a little bit of a cutter running just away. A touch from Tibbs. Good pitch by Hartle. Big strikeout. A dangerous hitter up there, 92 miles per hour. And it looked like Tibbs might have been sitting on the breaking ball. Pardon me, Larry. Number four for Hartle. Now one away for Dingus. One for two with a run score. There's a strike. Base hit last inning. Slow roller, King will charge. Good strong throw up in Kurtz's eyes. Dingus retired two away. Smith down to second base. Soft contact once again. Looked like Seaver King was saying, that might have been a cutter I threw over to first base. <laughs> So two outs for the uh, left fielder, Jaime Ferrer, one for two day. <laughs> Opening strike from Hartle. Big curveball. He's really done a much better job landing his curveball, maybe more today than any game so far this season. Another strike, nothing in two. Base hit could add to the Florida State lead. Struck him out, however, number five. That'll end the inning. Seminole leads still two. Middle of the fifth inning. And take strike one here. Backdoor breaking ball. Looks like a, looked like a little meditation effort out there with a breathing exercise for Dorsey. And just like that, ahead in the count, nothing in two. It's interesting, the mental side of the game really becoming much more of a focus at the college no level now. Hit the major leagues a few years back. Now you see staff psychologists and, and different people that have mental cues for players to use to get into their own zone. They're getting the flow, as they like to call it. That's high. Salvino lays off, and it's two and two.
Got him looking out on strikes. Number nine for Dorsey. Second strike out of the day for Salvino. Backside breaking ball. Been an effective pitch. It's always an effective pitch, but it's been done very well by Florida State two days in a row. Now that's really close on the outside corner, but it looks like the strike zone is going to be out that way. Now the Deacon center fielder Nelson squares to bunt. That's foul. The Nelson, one of the fastest runners on the Wake Forest team, and they'd like to get this part of the game much more involved for him, especially with a left-hander that falls off a little bit to the right-hand side, to the third base side, rather. 0 for 1 with a pop out to left field. That's high. Remember those old iron mic machines? Yeah. Got one in our lab up the street. Play with that occasionally. That's kind of what it looks like. On the ground to second, right at Fisher. Easy play for him, two away. Two down now for the Wake Forest catcher, Jacob Burley. Got the start today, came on late last night to catch. He shows bunt, that's way high. That's in there, a ball and a strike. And the 1-1 one, one pitch. It's into the wake dugout. Stays alive. Burley, a Californian, started his career at Brown. Here's now yeah, there's time call at the plate. Yeah, we had a bat boy a little bit out of position. And great call by home plate umpire Trevor Hinson to hold things up. Struck him out. That is number 10 for Dorsey. Arnold had 12 last night for Florida State. On to the sixth, 3-1 FSU. There's your line for Josh Hartle, and it's been a pretty clean game for him. No earned runs, a little bit of sloppy defense by Wake Forest a couple of times. But uh, State knows with a two-run lead. After Wake got out early on a 1A solo home run. Three unanswered by the Seminoles. Nice breaking ball in there for a strike. To me, it's been landing the breaking ball, landing his curveball, throwing it more, landing it more, has made a big difference for Josh Hartle. Yeah. Swing and a miss by Cantu. Two for two today with a run scored. Little outside. My tough pitch to lay off. Yeah. Two balls and two strikes. Got in there. Strikeout number six, one away. So tough to lay off that he threw it again. And Cantu couldn't. You see Burley getting outside. This one a little bit up more out of the strike zone, but a really good look. Safe to say that this is the best that Hartle has looked this year, I think. Holbrook twice has reached on a fielder's choice. Takes a strike there.
Holbrook out of Orlando started his baseball career at West Virginia. A couple of years for the Mountaineers in 21 and 22. A couple of years ago, he was second team all Big 12. Last year at Florida State, had 21 starts, drove in 11 runs. Had a sacrifice fly against Wake when the Deeks were number one in May. Florida State won that game four to three. As Holbrook stays alive. Full count. You got a running tab over there? Full count? I quit. <laughs> I quit. It's too many to keep up with. Payoff pitch lifted into center. Nelson is back to the track. Plenty of room for the catch, and they're two down. Well, that one got a little bit deeper than I thought it was going to, looking at the effort expended on the swing. And the way it started out, drifted pretty well out into right center field. So two down now for the second baseman, Cal Fisher. Struck out a couple times. That's lifted to left and deep. Back is Salvino right in front of the wall. And he makes the catch. A lot better and having a drift year offensively and his usual fine defensive season. A double already today back in the first inning in his first at bat of the day. He had a grand slam in this ballpark against Alabama and the Winston Salem Super Regional on Wake's way to the College World Series a year ago. Takes a bad swing at an 0-2 pitch. Stays alive, there, however. Just barely. Oh, you have to. Doesn't take much. <laughs> and a second chance. Ball one. Oh, Houston, of course, was the hitter last night when Link Jarrett made the move with a 3-2 count to bring Brennan Oxford in. Tom Walter told him what he was going to throw, but it was that slider down just out of the strike zone that he couldn't hold up on. Got to figure a Florida native like he is, excited to see the Seminoles come yep. down. Two two from Dorsey. That is pulled behind the back. Smith cannot come up with it. Hitting the perfect spot. Really tough, tough play. Tough opportunity there for Smith. Pulls the hands in and hits it down the line. Just hit a little bit on the heel. A foot or so inside the third baseline. Base hit for Houston. Now Adam Tellier for Wake shows bunt, popped it up. Reach out, Larry. Come on. Yeah, you gotta have a better effort than that. I've got freakishly well. Stan, I know the game. I know where the ball was going, okay? And I've got freakishly long arms, but if you guys could have seen the look I just got by my buddy over here. Wow. Slide over here a little bit. Away from you. Yeah, I knew where the ball was going. No wasted effort. That's false hustle. That drops in for a strike. Nothing in two. Really good pitch by Dorsey. Check swing. <laughs> 
And now the one-two pitch. Call strike three, number 11 for Dorsey. Second time he's gotten tell you today looking. Tell you might have been fooled a little bit by the pitch selection. He wasn't happy with the location his last time up, and uh, I'm sure he's thrilled with the location of the strikeout call on that one either. <laughs> Looked like a pretty good pitch. Going to be a visit, looks like, to the mound here. Yep. And Micah Posey is out to have the conversation with the left-hander Dorsey to face the left-hander Kurtz. Now there is action in the Florida State bullpen, but it is another left. One on, one out here in the sixth, and Florida State leading by two. That is ripped into right center. That'll one, two, three, four, hop to the wall. That'll be a double for Kurtz. Houston down at third base. And Wake making a little noise here in the sixth inning. Uh, Florida State lucky that Kurtz didn't get any elevation to that ball. Because that was scalded in the right center field. That had that top spin on it. There's several hops before it got to the wall. Yeah, if he did, I mean, look at how quickly that ball came down. And now let's see how the defense goes in at the corners, back up the middle. See for King at the plate, takes ball one. He has struck out and grounded out today. Interesting that Florida State pulls the corners in so tight. Good cut, a little bit late. Ball and a strike. Base hit could tie the game here in the sixth inning. That's a slow roller, might be trouble. One play at uh, the first base back for the out, a run will score, and Florida State's lead is now three to two. Put the ball in play in the middle part of the field is what you want to do, and I thought maybe Dorsey might have gotten a glove on that, but. I'm Getting another look, it didn't look like he did, but Seaver King does his job. Get the ball into the middle of the field, get a run in. And now Jack Wene for Wake. It's a high strike. Wene with a home run and a walk today. That is off the plate. Really nice job by Holbrook to keep that one from going to the screen. Nick Kurtz down there at third base would have walked home and tied the game. Oh, and he's got a little history this year of multiple home run games. Two balls and a strike. Personally, with first base open, guy already has a home run in this ball game. You got a left-hander on deck that's really been struggling. Don't get anything too close to the plate. I'm pitching in this situation. That drops in for a strike, two and two. So, or you can throw it middle middle. <laughs> you can do that too. <laughs> what, right, right down Dickon Boulevard. Woo. Okay. Same spot, different result. This one to the wall. Is that caught? What a play by Ferrer. Wow. We have seen two great plays by each left fielder today, and Ferrer robbed. Ferrer dented the wall a little bit out there once he made contact with it. Bottom of the order for Florida State. Lodice will lead it off. And he does so with a base hit. And it will go all the way to the wall and a lead off double to start the seventh inning 
for Florida State, and that base hit gets him to the top of the order. Third hit of the wow. day for Low D's, and he's already driven in a run. Yeah, it takes a pitch that's down and away, and Wake Forest had a shift on him up the middle, and he took it just to the left of Tellier. Big day. So he is out there at second base. Now Max Williams. Shows butt, that's foul. Lodice had taken off to third. He's going to have to retreat back to second base. Late bunt jab attempt. The Seminoles have seven hits, and uh, that fellow, Lodice, has three of them. Yeah, hard to believe. One, two, three. One, two, three. Let's go. Rubbing that left knee after getting back to the base, he looks to be okay. Making him work out there. <laughs> get him moving, get him diving. <laughs> make him not want to run. That's the whole idea is just make the runner just think, I've got to pay extra attention. Maybe I'll just hang tight. Foul at the plate. Nothing in two. Another good breaking ball from Hartle. Max Williams today. 0 for 2 with a sacrifice. He's grounded out and struck out. There is action in the Wake Forest bullpen. David Felko, a right hander, is throwing. One run game, seventh inning. Lead off double for Florida State. 0 2 pitch, got him swinging. Strikeout number seven for Josh Hartle. And a nice sequence for Hartle. Breaking ball really effective today. Now back to the Seminoles, the third baseman number 24, Cam Smith. So Williams retired, now the third baseman, Cam Smith. 0 for 2 with a walk, reached on an error. Ball one. Two balls and no strikes. Six game hit streak in that streak, hitting 500, 13 base hits, four of them extra base hits driven in six. That's pretty good, uh, yep. <laughs> pretty good couple of weeks. I'll see you say, okay, this guy's red hot. I don't really want to face to him. Only one problem with that idea. James Tibbs on deck. Mm-hmm. There is a strike, three and one. Takes a cut, three and two. Everybody and a pitcher, good news, good news. He swings at it, fouls it off, hits himself in the foot too. <laughs> so that's that's a win-win for a pitcher. Payoff pitch, ground ball to short. Long throw and Smith retired. Down to third will go Lodis. The thought runs through your head as you saw Lodis. Head to third base a little bit ahead of that ball that maybe there was a shot there, but good call by Houston to go across the diamond. Two down and uh, Tibbs is at the plate. 0 for 3 today. That's a high fly ball to right. Wene will watch it sail out of here. Off the light stanchion and... The Seminoles add two more and lead by three. Yeah, I didn't have time to add on your 0 for 3 today. Just to me means he's due, and he sat on a breaking ball. 
and crushed it. That ball very well hit. Perfect timing, great form, never a doubt. His 16th home run, again, he drives in a couple more, 60 runs driven in on the year, leading the ACC. Dengis at the plate. Count now nothing in two. Just does stay alive at the end of the dugout. That one uh, measured 395 to right. Yeah, it was, the, it was the breaking ball that he just didn't get where he wanted it like Hartle did with the last two breaking balls that were down out of the strike zone. That is ripped toward left. Salvino in front of it. Two out single for the Seminole DH. The baseball for Wake, he will face Jaime Ferrer. Made that great catch out in left field. Offers at the first pitch. Ferrer today is grounded out, singled, and struck out. Slow roller, King will go to first for the out. That'll do it for the Seminoles here. And this is a doubleheader day here in Winston-Salem at the David F. Couch Ballpark, home of the Demon Deacons. You know, obviously, you'd like to try to get as deep into Florida State's bullpen if you're Wake Forest as you can, and you want to do it right now. Try to use up some arms so that they can't pitch in the second game. Reinish has struck out twice today here in game two. Both times swinging in the second and the fourth inning. There's a strike two and one. Good stuff on it, 93 miles per hour. Takes a cut at one high and inside. It's two and two. It looked like it might have been out of the strike zone. And that's about the worst thing you can do is, is help a pitcher out that you're trying to force into a high pitch count. Two, two foul back into the screen. And Ryan has struck out three times last night, twice today. He's just trying to find anything, something. Dive a body part in front of one? Anything. <laughs> Wind's blowing out to right. Lefty-lefty matchup here. And the Knolls get him again. Nice breaking ball by Oxford. Tough pitch. So Rhinus retired for the third time today. Strikeout number one for Oxford. No breaking ball down the way outside corner. Excellent pitch. Oxford played two seasons in Winston-Salem. This is his second in Tallahassee. Now Salvino, who's also struck out twice. Oh, my Squared to bunt, and I think that gets into Holbrook behind the plate. Not sure if Salvino's bat hid the ball or Holbrook didn't see it, but wasn't fouled off and called no attempt by our first base umpire, Gregory Street. 
He just ducked his head. <laughs> I guess he thought that Salvino was going to try to bunt it. Takes a cut this time, one and one. Good breaking ball again. His strikeout in the second was swinging, had another one looking in the fifth inning. And the 1-1. One, one. Chopper to Smith. Routine play, two away. We talk about momentum and turning games around. That catch in left field by Pereira set up the inning for Florida State. Those defensive plays, take a look tonight about uh, 11 o'clock or so. <laughs> You'll see them again. 11.20 probably. Center fielder Cam Nelson, 0 for 2, popped out, grounded out. Pretty good cut and a good pitch. Oh, one hit to right center, but shallow, tough play, and Tibbs can't get there from right field. That drops in for a base hit. Long run for Tibbs. It was either going to be Tibbs or Williams. Tibbs had the best shot. Just couldn't get there. Uh, just an extended off the end of the bat swing. Hit them where they ain't. <laughs> that works. It just drops in. Reagan High School here in Winston-Salem transferred in here from North Carolina. And looks at ball one. Have to do a rundown of the Pro Deeks here before long one of these days. A lot of Seminoles playing pro ball, obviously, as well. Ball two to Hawk. He's driven in 20 runs on the year. Has three home runs. Looks at strike one. Strike two. That's oh, a really good pitch. <laughs> Full count. Didn't miss by a whole lot. Nelson got to make sure that Oxford goes to home plate, then he'll be off and running. And the well, throw's going to be to first. Got to make sure he goes to home plate, then you're <laughs> off and running. Uh -huh. <laughs> Here's the payoff pitch. Walked in. Two out walk, back to back. Deacons reach base. Hawk down to first. Nelson will try it down to second. Now the Deacons get to the top of the order. Well, now you get to most importantly, yeah. My kind of guy. <laughs> Number of people asked. All right, here's Houston. Couple of base hits today. 
scored one of Wake's two runs. There's a strike delivered by Oxford. Inning started off innocently enough with a strikeout and a ground ball. Then Nelson got a base hit. Hawk draws the walk. A one chopper to short, and that is off the glove of Lodis. Coming home to score is Nelson, or try to anyway. Yeah, he's there. And now it is five to three. Boy, some odd timing on that as the ball bounced off the glove of Lodis going to his backhand side. He goes up, looked like he had it, and then hustled after it, quickly looked up. I don't know if Nelson slowed a bit around third. Bill Salento was waving him, and he ended up, he made it by a lot more than it looked like he was going to. So big break for the Deeks. Close this gap. And the pitch to Teller is off the plate. That'll be an error charge to Lodis at short. A left-hander and a right-hander throwing in the Florida State bullpen. Tell your 0 for 3 today. Ball two. First error of the day for Florida State. Knowles had one last night. And the 2-0 pitch. Off the plate, ball three. Not by much. The right-hander is Joe Charles in the bullpen. Kurt's on deck. So you would think they would go to the left side. And I think that's Connor Holtz down there. Three balls, no strikes. Tell your crowds the plate. And that is a strike. Well, now if you're tell you, you really have to have something in your happy place. Three one from Oxford. That is high in the air right side, shallow right field. Tibbs camps under it, makes the catch. Off for Florida State. There's a strike. Tough lineup to make if you make a home run robbing catch in left field and then get taken out. <laughs> Slow roller, Tellier, again now at third base. The throw to first for the out one away. Just a little bit up the line, and that's a play you know that Kurtz doesn't like to see. He's been banged at first a couple yeah. times in his career that have cost him games, not Tellier, but Kurtz. One away for Holbrook. 0 for 3 today. We're in the eighth. Florida State with a two run lead. Strike one. That is foul by a couple of feet. Lumenauer's been active over yep. there at third. <laughs> And Tellier makes the move over there, and they started finding him. It's a funny thing about baseball, isn't it? Here's the 0-2, ball one. Counts even, two balls, two strikes. Nobody on, one out for the Seminoles here in the top of the eighth inning. 
That is pulled down the line, hit very well, and out of here by about a foot or two is all. Holbrook's second home run. Well, a screamer, it didn't look like it was going to have enough altitude to get out and did not make it by much. Just inside the foul pole, just over the fence. And Florida State back to a three-run lead. I have nightmares of those sounds. That was blistered. And now Fisher to the plate. That's ball one. So for three, hit the, his last one to the wall in the six when Salvino robbed him. Right at the yellow line on top of the fence. I don't think it would have been a home run, but it was hit very, very well. <laughs> Did not go. Matter of fact, let me change that. I think it would have gone. Uh, Salvino made that great catch. It was Ferrer's. Yeah, uh, it was Ferrer's. Yeah, play. Robbing Wene. Here's the 2-1. Two, 2-2. One. Two and two. The two of the better catches you will see we saw today. One by Salvino, one by Ferrer for FSU. Full count. Payoff pitch got him. A terrific fastball, just about the same spot. Would have caught the corner, swing and a miss. First strikeout for Falco. Now two down for Lodis, the shortstop. Scored a couple times today, driven in a run. Good change up. Ball and a strike to Lodis, who started all 55 games last year at North Florida at shortstop. Got a UNF freshman record in home runs. Runs driven in, runs scored. <laughs> Transferred into Tallahassee. One two pitch. Yeah, he went. And he is out. You with a three run lead. Kurtz, King, and Winay scheduled to hit. Oxford remains on the mound. Kurtz trying to get out of the way. It's an easy out. Nobody's quite sure at home plate. It looked like maybe that uh, David Pritchett was going to make some kind of call. He did not. Ball just kept following Kurtz in. Then a long run for Oxford. Made Kurtz make a long run. That's a great way to get Kurtz out oh. for Florida State. Now Seaver King at the plate for the Deeks. That's a bomb to left. That'll cut into the deficit by one. A no-doubter. His 12th of the year. Crushed. And it makes that ball that followed Nick Kurtz in and resulted in an easy out even more important. A 
technology tells us that that ball went 461 feet and 116 miles per hour off of the bat. That's why you stop and look when you hit them like that. Second home run of the day for the Deeks. When they got Wake out in front back in the second inning with a solo homer. 6-4 now Florida State's lead is when A stands in and looks at ball one. And how big does that line drive home run look right now? Mm. By Holbrook? From Holbrook, yeah. yeah. Check swing and he went around. Ball and a strike. So frustrating as a pitcher because you just go get down, get down, get down, <laughs> go foul, go foul, go foul. <laughs> Two balls and a strike of the Deacon right fielder. Whereas the ball that Tibbs hit. If you're in a major league park, you say, don't hurt anybody out there hmm. in the bleachers. Hey, looks at strike two here, two and two. Stays alive. He had a homer in the second. Got Wake out to the early lead. Then he walked in the fourth. Flied out to left field to win the sixth inning. Fourteen home runs on the year, and forty runs driven in for Wene. Two two didn't miss by a whole lot. Three balls and two strikes. Bases are clean, one away here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Another good baseball game between these two who played a right at three and a half hours last night. Wake able to win it 5 4. And a walk. said it a number of times it was just a really great baseball experience out here last night but another good one so far today 43 pitches already 33 excuse me 33 pitches for Oxford after throwing last night as well Went through 19 last night in steps Reinish had a tough day, tough series. But it could end on that swing. That's not tough. That is out. And just like that, a brand new game here in Winston-Salem. <laughs> that makes the weekend worthwhile. For Jack Reinish. Jake Reinish. Wow. Absolutely no doubt as that ball heads for the scoreboard. 405 feet out that way. Reinish ties this game up. Three strikeouts last night. Three strikeouts today. But a two-run homer to tie it here in the bottom of the eighth against the former Demon Deer. He shows bunt. In comes Holt. It's going to be a tough play, but makes it. That's tough right out of the uh, bullpen. Nice play in her two down. Really nice job. He got rid of it in a hurry. I think about 91, 92 maybe down to first base. He let it go. Knew he had to hurry. 
Gill tipped it just a little bit early, but still took a great play by Halt to retire him at first base. So now Nelson, who started in center, now in left. Takes a breaking ball, strike one. He singled and scored back in the seventh inning. Ground ball to second. Easy play for Fisher. And the side is retired, but big damage by Wood. Williams 0 for 3 with a sacrifice today. Slow rotor to second. Hawk is there, one away. Maybe a little bit more white visible on that play than you like to see. <laughs> like just a touch of a snow cone. But Hawk makes the play. You know, we, we get so excited about home runs, obviously, as Tom Walter heads out to the mound, makes a motion to the bullpen. 0 for 3 with a walk. Reached on an error in the third inning. That's high for ball one. Wake Forest got two in the eighth last night. Just got three in the eighth here. There's a strike, one and one. A full house, 6-6 six, six game, two great teams, nationally ranked. And another one to come. And another one to come. Yeah. He went, strike two. Good company up here in the booth. It's a great day to be alive, Stan. Oh, now you love me. <laughs> Gave me the death stare about 20 minutes ago. Well, I want to stay at your house again tonight. <laughs> yeah. You have no choice. Well, we're going to be here a while. Yeah, we, we both might sleep here tonight. Yeah. It's fun. This is just fun. One two to Smith. He stays alive. Big uh, swing on a bit of a hanger. Running out of things to say about Cam Smith. <laughs> that spins him around, nearly got him. Two balls and two strikes. Sophomore out of Lake Worth. And got caught looking. And he didn't like it. Barking on his way back to the dugout. Yeah, I think he got fooled a bit by pitch selection there, too, because after the hard fastball inside that spun him around, your natural inclination is to think fast or a slider down and away. Instead, he goes hard with the fastball away. Brink takes it. That's in for a strike. One of the best hitters in the ACC, and you start him off with a breaking ball. That's low. Ball and a strike. Finish that story up about Muscari. He said, you go back through the numbers and look at what an exceptional class did and what this class is doing. You're going to like these guys in a couple of years. It's outside ball two, even more. Three balls and a strike with two outs here in the ninth and nobody on here, Florida State. Game tied at six after a one run game last night. Full count. <laughs> a great pitch call by Corey Mascara, but a breaking ball on a 3-1 count. He wasn't trying to slap it to left. <laughs> he was thinking game winner with that swing. The Morning Star payoff pitch. It's behind us and out of play. A little harder breaking ball, got it in on the hands. 
Inning started with a Max Williams ground out. Pitching change, and Cam Smith struck out looking. A three and two to Tibbs. And he walked in. So the Knowles get the go-ahead run to first base here in the ninth inning. And the DH, Marco Dingus, to the plate. A couple of base hits today, both singles. He's grounded out twice. Drove in a couple runs last night. A good breaking ball. Down in the Wake Forest dugout, Matt Wessinger was just down and gave the nothing over your head look to the outfielders, and they are deep. There's only one way that a ball would get over their head in the ballpark right now <laughs> as Morningstar is right in the middle of the shadows. Really good time for a pitcher to be throwing a pitch. Two balls and a strike. One on, two outs, top of the ninth. And a tie game. Look at the shadows tough, here at the man. couch. Yeah. yeah, that's tough. 6.38 Eastern time. That's well hit to center coming in King. Long run that'll bounce over his head. Off the artificial surface, and Florida State will have Tibbs all the way from first scoring on the play. Well, again, the Wake outfielders were playing back, Larry, as you called it, and then that bounce off this hard artificial surface over the head of King, and Florida State goes ahead. Just got a little bit over-aggressive with his speed coming in at it, and the ball took the high hop. That's a mental error by Seaver King. Florida that, State now in front, 7-6 as Ferrer comes to the plate. And that took the wind out of the sails of this crowd in a hurry. Really did. That'll be a run driven in for Dinges. His fortieth. And the 0-1 pitch. So it should have been a first and third situation. And with two out, becomes a man on second. It's out of play. We were kind of kidding last night about, you know, we've seen everything. <laughs> we, we hadn't seen that. No, no. Good job by Nelson in left field backing it up to hold him to a double. In the air right side, and that'll drift into the seats. Well, and again, you know, okay, the, the proper defensive play is nothing over your head. That's absolutely the right play in that situation. But because he is so deep, he doesn't get to the ball that if had he been playing normal depth, He'd have probably caught that ball in the air off the bat. One-two pitch, a bomb to left. That is a home run. Florida State having some kind of ninth. Two-run shot for Ferrer who is really enjoying his trout around the bases. Little jump and skip at third. Florida State on top now, 9-6. to six. He knows. Knew it. <laughs> you always know, right? 
You always know. Now Daniel Cantu at the plate for Florida State. 9-6 lead for the Seminoles here in the ninth inning. Second pitch for Morningstar, 2-0. All of this with wow. two outs here in the ninth inning. And what looked like a fairly innocent walk to Tibbs. The most dangerous hitter in the Florida State after the wake eighth to tie the game. Didn't mean to. Three and one. Full count. Got two with a couple of hits today. Scored a run. Been retired his last two at-bats with a strikeout and a ground ball. That is hit well to right. Back is Wene. That is off the wall and digging for second. Can two. He will slide in easily, and it just continues for the Seminoles here with two outs in the ninth inning. Well, that had so much top spin on it that it came down and stayed in the ballpark because it was very well struck. And that's a hard ball to see, too, for Wene yeah. out in that Sunfield and right. Yeah, I mean, that's about eight inches below that yellow line. Corey was sent by a foot or so down the left field stripe. High breaking ball, ball one. That was just his second home run all season long. It's inside, ball two. Inside breaking ball, backs Holbrook out. He wanted no part of it when it started at his hip. Back down out. And it's two and one. That's high. Three balls and a strike. And this Florida State ninth has taken the crowd oh. right out of the game. That's hit to center. King uh, battling the sun maybe a little bit. Pinch hit for Burley in the seventh through a walk. And looks at strike one. Again, at the conclusion of the game, right at 40 minutes of a break, and then we're back for game three in this doubleheader, ball one. The exciting finale. Wow. Strike two, one and two. Action in the Florida State bullpen. Looks to be Charles again. One, two from Holtz. Got him. Came back with another breaking ball, and Hawk was looking for something harder. And I think thought Hawk thought it might have been low. He's called out on strike, so one down, and now the top of the wake order. Here's Marek Houston. He takes a strike. 
Nice job painting the edges of the strike zone by Holt. Houston led off the bottom of the first with a double for the Deeks, was left stranded. He has since struck out, singled and scored, and reached on an air. Seminoles have out hit Wake Forest 13 to 7 today thus far. 0 2 pitch in charges low D's at short. Good strong throw, and they're two down. Up to Adam Tellier now with two away. Looks like All right, Houston had an odd skip and a jump as he came in. Now Tellier swings at the first pitch, hit pretty well to center, back is Ross for the play, and that'll do it. And Florida State wins game two.